You have to create a strong mindset. And mindset is the thing that causes people to get on the phones and not get on the phone. Mindset is the thing that causes people to be consistent and those that kind of back off when they don't feel like it. And what's great about mindset is you can learn how to create a strong mindset. So maybe today you don't have a good mindset. Maybe today you're struggling with rejection. Maybe today there's things internally that are causing you to really struggle getting on the phones and being consistent. But what's great is you can put a plan in place on how to strengthen your mindset. It's that time. Welcome to Roadmap, how to take three listings a week until you're ready for more. Each week we interview a great agent who is consistently taking several listings each month. And we have an exciting guest today. And we encourage you to take notes, apply as much of the knowledge as quickly as you can, and then use the copycat principle. Let me introduce my co-host from San Diego, Carly Hathaway. That's carlyhathaway.com. Hi, Carly. How's everything in the real estate business? Hi, Ren. Hi, everybody. Real estate is fantastic. It is such a good time to be a listing agent. I'm loving it. Let's dive right in. Our guest today sells a lot of real estate in Michigan, Florida, and is soon to be opening up in Chicago. Isn't that the way real estate sold these days? This is exciting. Anyway, our guest, Justin Ford. Hey, Ren. Thanks so much for having me today. I appreciate it. We're so excited to have you. Thanks for being on. Carly, thank you so much. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so hey, you're doing a, quite a few different areas, but let's just dive right into this. What is your goal for the year? Uh, goal for the year for homes sold this year is about 150. Uh, last year, I did 125. So the goal is to be 150 this year uh, and close to 40 million in personal value amazing amazing and are you on track oh uh, absolutely yeah actually uh just just looked at the numbers for the first half of the year and we are right on track and and looking to even uh go past that those goals as well fantastic okay and you say we so i'm assuming do you have a team or do you have buyers agents or what does your setup look like yep so i i do have a team around me uh but i also have my own personal team i have three admins and also a showing assistant and so the, the numbers that I just shared with me, with you would be my own personal numbers, uh, not including our team numbers. So that's your personal production, man, you are a rock star. Yeah. 150 homes. I love it. Yes. Good okay. So obviously, you know, you're not sitting on your tush. So what are you doing to get these listings and get these homes sold? Yep. Great question. And, and I'll concur that it is a great time to be a listing agent right now. Uh, so thankful. I've been in the business for eight years and right off the bat, I was taught how to use Vulcan 7 and literally make prospecting calls. Right, right from day one, I was calling expires and for sale by owners. And so over the last eight years, I've really been able to build the habit of prospecting every single day from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, call for sale by owners and expires, just listed, just sold, circle prospecting. And, uh, you know, over the eight years, I've, you know, obviously built up now a sphere of influence and a past client list. And so I've really got a, you know, a variety of different ways that, uh, that I get business, but my core foundation is still calling uh, for sale by owners and expires. That's amazing. And you've been doing this for eight years and you're prospecting for four, you know, three, four, five hours every morning, starting at eight. Did you have to build up to that? Or, you know, eight years ago, were you just like, let me get on the phone for four hours? <laughs> yeah. So the team that I joined back in uh, 2013, the, the way that their whole entire platform was set up was you had to be an inside sales associate, also known as the ISA, for the first 90 to 120 days before you could ever meet with a seller or a buyer. So you were literally given scripts, you were given a desk, and you were given a phone and some leads, and, and you were told to go make it happen. So it was our, you know, it was what everybody did. You had to be on the phones as an ISA for eight to 10 hours a day. And so to go from eight to 10 hours a day doing it for 90 to 120 days, to only doing it three to four hours a day, 
uh, was, was a lot different, but obviously still very profitable. Yeah. It sounds like you were almost in kind of like a boot camp to get really strong on the phones. That's exactly what it was. It was, it was a 90 to 120 day boot camp. And the team that I was working with said, if you can learn this skill and really conquer this over the next 90 to 120 days, it'll make you into a great salesperson. Yeah, sounds like it. And you mentioned scripts. Um, how important is it to use scripts and not just kind of wing it and have a conversation with a potential seller? So I always, because I, I actually teach a lot of real estate agents this information. And I always say, you know, when you start off as a brand new agent, or if you've been an agent, you're, you know, getting on the phones for the first time, you have to have scripts because the script is the roadmap on how to get to an appointment, right? Mm -hmm. And the reason why scripts are so important is because selling is not telling, selling is asking questions. And so if you're asking the right questions, it's leading you to their motivation. And if you know their motivation and why their home didn't sell or what their motivation is to sell, then you're going to be able to kind of lead into that, you know, scheduling an appointment. But if you're just looking to wing it and trying to figure it out on your own, you're going to, you're going to have a lot of growing pains, but I always say, you know, follow what works and scripts work. And once you master them, you know, then you can kind of make them your own. Like I don't read off of a script every day, eight years later, you know, I've internalized it, I've memorized it and I've made it my own. Mm -hmm. But if somebody's starting out, absolutely. You can't do it without scripts. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. So for those people just starting out, how do you get past those hangups or those getting yelled at? And how do you kind of overcome that and not let it get your energy down? You know, I, I love that question. I talk about this all the time. And I think this is the number one thing that caused agents to fear getting on the phones. And so what I tell them is expect the no's, right? When I get on the phones, I expect people to say no. You know, I expect them to say no. And I'm only looking for one to two people per day to say yes. And so when someone cusses me out or you know, says whatever they say, because they say all types of stuff. I don't take that personal. That just is a sign to me that that's not the person that I'm supposed to be working with. But if I continue to make the calls, right? I, I love what Jim Rohn says. He says, law of averages, right? You make enough calls, uh, appointments show up. And so I teach, you know, and, and as you guys do, and you hear people talk on here is, you know, when you get on the phones and you're consistent and you make the calls, you know, appointments show up, but you have to go through the no's to get to the yes. Mm -hmm. So expect the no's. That's smart because then it's not going to affect your energy as much, right? So can I can I uh, expand on the the rejection piece? So one of the things that we know, I mean, it's 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 easy to say, well, I did eight to twelve, and and I expect the no's and all that. And what we know is for a lot of human beings that are watching right now, that maybe take zero to two listings a month, somewhere in that range. But one of the things they struggle with is how do I how, how do I do it on the days I don't feel like it? How do, when I do get a knot in my stomach from all this rejection, what are the, what, what are the structural pieces that maybe it's a pre-prospecting routine? Maybe it's your mindset. What, what are all the little ingredients that will help them do what you're describing? Because we make it sound so easy. Let's be fair. It, we make it sound easy here. That's great. Ben, and I appreciate you touching on that. I've created what I call the six keys to success. And the six keys basically give you that roadmap on how to overcome that rejection and really set yourself up for success. And number one is you have to start with a goal. You know, what is your goal? And I remember my very first year in the business, my, my goal was to sell 100 homes my first year. And I remember coming back from a retreat. It was actually a Mike Ferry retreat. And, you know, Mike had said it was in January. He said, hey, what's everybody's goal this year? And, and my goal was to sell 100 homes my first year. Everybody thought I was crazy, but I, be I believed it. And so I came up with a plan of what do I need to do every single day? How many people do I need to talk to every hour, right? Every day, every week, how many listings, how many appointments, all the way to show, okay, if I do this, this leads me to this. But then number two is I have to discover my why. Why do I want this? Why am I getting on the phones? What is the end result? And what does that ultimately lead to? And why is that important for me? And what I've noticed is you have to have a why that's bigger than that knot in your stomach when you don't feel like it. You have to have a why that is bigger than I don't feel like it. Uh, because if your why is not big enough, then you will. You'll, you won't show up, right? You'll be inconsistent. But then number three, Ren, I think is the big one to create a strong mindset. And mindset is the thing that causes people to get on the phones and not get on the phone. Mindset is the thing that causes people to be consistent 
and those that kind of back off when they don't feel like it. And what's great about mindset is you can learn how to create a strong mindset. So maybe today you don't have a good mindset. Maybe today you're struggling with rejection. Maybe today there's things internally that are causing you to really struggle getting on the phones and being consistent. But what's great is you can put a plan in place on how to strengthen your mindset. And the number four is you have to make a commitment because without a commitment, what's the point in even showing up? Number five is discipline. You have to have discipline. Discipline is the thing that sets people apart that are winning and people that are not. And then number six is accountability, right? If you're going to commit to getting on the phones and you're going to commit to making calls, find an accountability partner, find a coach, find a mentor, somebody that can hold you accountable to the first five. And when you put those, those six keys you know, in place, I found those are the six keys to success. It really equips someone, gives someone what they need to succeed on the phones. I love that. Can you give an example of mindset? Because I you know some people they really get that, and some people are like, I wonder what he means by that. What 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 could what could I do to change that my state of mind where I want to make that next call? Yep, that's a great question. Uh, one thing that that I did uh, when I first started was I had my vision board right in front of me. Okay. I looked at the things I wanted to accomplish in my life and things that I that you know goals that I wanted to hit. And I knew that by making the phone calls, they were ultimately going to lead uh, to those things. Another one is reading, you know, be, you know, there's a Bible verse. I always share this, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You don't even need to be religious to even, you know, look at that. It just, if you change your mind, you transform, right? So we transform our mindset by what we put in our mind, by what we read, by what we listen to, you know, by the, by the, you know, the things that we put in, what we impress, we express. And so I always say, you know, if someone's struggling with fear, then, then maybe you need to listen to some things on how to teach you how to overcome fear. Or if you're struggling with rejection, I always take people through a little exercise. Okay, let, let's go back and look in your life. At to what time in your life did you, you know, start struggling with rejection? And when, when people can kind of look back and work through some of those things, then they can show up more you know, more power, empowered and excited on the, on the mindset side to, to make calls. It's so interesting. It goes back to like your entire life, how to build strong mindset. And I really love that phrase. Um, what you impress, you express. That's great. Love it. Yeah. And, and, and here's what I'll say, Carly, is, you know, especially as adults, right? Here we are. We're adults. We're big boys and big girls now. But yet so many of us have never dealt with the stuff from when we were kids, right? Mm -hmm. Or when we were teenagers, when we were bullied, when we were rejected, when, you know, mom and dad got a divorce and dad left and it left me insecure, or whatever it may be. And we, we kind of, we grow up, you know, we get our big boy and big girl pants on, but those things are still lodged into our subconscious mind. And so when we show up to make prospecting calls, all of a sudden, you know, all of those things start triggering in our subconscious mind. And we're afraid to make calls because we were afraid to be rejected because we never dealt with it back when we were teenagers or when we all right, moving away from pain, moving towards pleasure. And I like the vision board, you know, places you want to go, things, things you want to do, things you want to have. I mean, I got to tell you, for me, building a wonderful vision board and all the exciting things I wanted to do, most, I think all of them have come true. You, you put those, and a lot of people say that they'll have a picture of a house or of different things they want to do. And three, four, five years later, they get there. And it's a great thing. You're making a call. You look at the vision boards. You're rejected. You know, you're feeling like I want to go have a cup of coffee. But you look at the vision board and say, no, I'm going to make another call. It's a powerful tool. Yeah. yeah definitely. And let's talk. OK, so I know um, kind of going back, you said you get on the phones by 8 a.m. Do you have a very set morning routine that kind of gets you in that mindset to get on those calls and be prepared and be strong mentally? Uh, there's a saying out there, and I'm sure a lot of us have heard of, heard of it, it's own the morning, win the day. And so when you own the morning, you win the day. And so how you start your day does matter. And so for me, sometimes, you know, it depends. I might go to the gym first thing in the morning, or I might go at lunch. So I kind of, I, I like to keep my day a little bit more balanced. Um, but for me, it's spending time in prayer. It's reading, it's meditating. You know, it's getting my day ready to be, you know, at my best when I get on the phone. So I'm at the office, I'm putting my headset on. You know, I'm getting on the phones at 8 a.m. I'm ready to go. And so my morning is the same every single day. And that's so important, especially for those that are going to do this and do it right. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, you're definitely. going through a lot of steps. You're going through some pretty amazing steps that really builds that energy to the point when you do get on the phone, you have built up 
your mindset, physically, emotionally, your mentally, you're prepared. I love that. Uh, and that's so that, that morning routine, and you gave so many examples. I think that's going to help a lot of the people watching. Mm -hmm. And knowing so, like mentally, you're going to start at 8 a.m. You're going to be ready. You're going to be there. It's really, really helpful. Yeah. I mean, and I tell people like when, you know, when I talk to some agents, like you prospect, yeah, usually get on the phones at like nine or nine 30. And my thought is people like me that are on the phones by 8 a.m. have already set appointments. And those people that you're calling at nine and nine 30 are probably not even answering the phone anymore. And so the, the start time truly does matter right? You want to be first to, you know, that lead. And a lot of times people will set an appointment with the first agent that they talk to. Mm -hmm. And so 8 a.m. start time is vital. Mm -hmm. And who do you like to start with at 8 a.m.? Yep. I call expireds first and then for sale by owners next. Okay. Perfect. Yep. And then do you get into old expireds at all? Or do you always stay with the new expireds? That's a great question. So I'll, I'll kind of tell you my routine. So I go new expireds, new for sale by owners. And then I usually especially in this market right now where, you know, there's a lot more for sale by owners than maybe in a more balanced market. And so I'll actually start calling for sale by owners from two weeks ago, uh, maybe seven days and more. A lot of times what I find is people who haven't sold their for sale by owner in seven, 10, 14 days, they're usually ready to sell or really ready to list. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Great. Love it. Okay. And then you were saying, you know, you like to read books in the morning. Um, are there any great books you can recommend that really help um, you become a stronger salesperson and be better on the phones? And yeah, I think, you know, it's, there, there's so many different types of books that are out there. I can just share a handful of mine. Uh, you know, my, my first and foremost, number one favorite book is the Bible. I read it every day. You know, that obviously motivates me and inspires me every single day. Uh, I love Robert Kiyosaki's book called Cashflow Quadrant. That is an absolutely incredible book. Uh, I'm reading a book right now that, uh, you know, that talks about like, you know, just, just being committed to what you say, you know, having the discipline, showing up, being focused, you know, I don't even, oh, here it is right here. I was going to say, I don't know the title off the top of my head because I, but it's called the willpower instinct, right? It says how self-control works, why it matters and what can you do to get more of it, right? So we're talking about prospecting and being disciplined and showing up on the phones. This is a good one. And then, uh, you know, everybody you know, is familiar with, um, uh, what book is it? Uh, there's uh, Three Feet from Gold is a really good one. And uh, there's just so many good books, but I would say those are my handful of my favorites. Okay, I love it. And that really helps because it, you know, it takes your brain into a different space that it's like, okay, this person's doing it this way. I can do it that way. You can take little pieces from everything you're reading. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What do you do so with your data? What do you do with your database? The people you know? Yep, that's great. Great question. <laughs> to, to believe it or not, so hopefully my, this may encourage somebody out there. I've been in the business eight years and I didn't even have a database until uh, two years ago. So for the first six years, I had so much business coming in from, from for sale by owners and expires. I didn't have time you know, to work my database, which I know sounds crazy. But once I hired a coach, she really started to help me get more balance in my business. And so then I started building a database and now I actually get quite a bit of repeat referral business, past client business, sphere of influence business. But before I, I didn't even have one, but it's, it's just staying in touch with them consistent, consistently and taking care of them while they're in there. Awesome. What about your listing process? Uh, you pre-qualify them before you go and make sure they're sort of vetted and then you go and then your presentation. Is that a, is that a two and a half hour to three hour presentation? <laughs> Well, for me, I actually do my pre-call right on the phone before, like when I'm taking the uh, taking the appointment. For some reason, I know some people do the, the pre-call right before they go out. I've never really done that. It's just never stuck for me. I know everybody does things differently. But for me, when I'm setting the listing appointment, I'm asking those pre-qualification questions right on there because I'm really vetting that lead before I set an appointment. And then I always call in advance and I always confirm the appointment to make sure that obviously they're still going to be available to meet with me. And then when, and this is a tip that was given to me that I think has worked great. And so for anybody else that uh, maybe I don't even want to say has a punctual, you know, being punctual problem, but uh, you know, for me, it's when I set an appointment, I always say, Hey, Carly, um, I'm available tonight between five and six or between six and seven, which one works better for you? And they'll say, well, between five and six, well, great. So I can be there as early as five or as late as six, depending upon my appointment before yours. And so rather than setting that 
on the button dot, you know, 5 p.m., you get stuck in traffic or your appointment runs over. I give myself that window so that if I'm there at 5.15 or 5.30, I'm not late because I told them between five and six and that always works great. And then when I show up at the appointment, my, my appointments are typically about an hour. Okay. And that's, have, with, uh, that's with that's with a signed contract too, right? Signed contract just got one last night, four hundred fifteen. Woohoo! Good deal. I like that window. I've never heard that before, and that's really smart, heard. like you said, because if you're running a little late from a previous appointment, the last thing you want to do is show up all flustered to their front door. You know, that's what it would do. Yeah. Even when it's not your fault, or even like, hey, I got stuck in traffic, in their mind, you're late, especially for an analytical. Right? Oh yeah, for an analytical. So. I always say, hey, and I'll text you 15 minutes or I'll call you 15 minutes, you know, uh, when I'm about 15 minutes out and it worked. Nobody's ever had an issue with it. Good. And I like that you just brought up the personality style analytical. Like how, how do you change your presentation depending on their personality type? And how do you figure out their personality type before you show up at the listing? Great question. So when I was introduced to the personality styles, it really it really made sense to me because before I really understood them, there were certain people that I would feel uncomfortable with more in an appointment than others. And being a high expressive and a high driver, I realized why I wasn't comfortable with analyticals is because they're the exact opposite of an expressive. Mm -hmm. And so I was wondering why I could never, like, cause I, being a, an expressive, you play off uh, emotion, body language, all of that. And analyticals are just like, <laughs> yes. Right? Yeah. And I was always sort of like, am I, what's wrong? Is there no connection here? And then when I found out that that's just how they are, then I could change my body tone, my body language, you know, my, my emotion and be more, I become more like them, right? I want to take on the analytical personality and the way that you learn what they are is you have to study the four personality styles. And when you really learn them, you know, and, and, and identify them, you can, you can look at key things that each uh, character trait or personality trait uh, displays, and then you can kind of find out which one they are. And you can do that over the phone, even before you get to the appointment by asking certain questions. Yeah, agreed. That's amazing. And it is so important. And your person, once you learn your own personality type, you're right, you can kind of bend and mold and mirror and match to be more comfortable with them. Absolutely. Yep. You know, and knowing thing. if they're analytical, you're going to show up with all the facts and numbers and data and not be scared of those questions. Yeah. And if you're a driver, you just want to sign the contract. That's it. Get to, get to the, what's the bottom line? Sign the contract. That, that could be the quickest appointment and a, a very happy day. Yes. Good deal. Yeah, we love drivers, right? <laughs> good, good deal. Good. I, I got to tell you, there, there's such a wealth of information here. Oh my mm -hmm. gosh, we've covered a lot of good stuff. And in, in rap and, 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 uh, in rapid fire fashion too, Justin. I mean, you were rattling off all these things that they could, you know, obviously they're going to have to play this over and over and over and over and over again. Because uh, it's, uh, this is the guide for, if you're, uh, if you're trying to get to where you take an extra listing a week, this is a good guide for you. This is mm -hmm. fantastic. Yeah, good stuff. So Justin, um, if people want to reach out to you and send you referrals or ask you questions or anything, how can they best get a hold of you? Yep. Yep. So I'm, uh, again, located in the uh, Detroit, Michigan area, cover all of Southeast Michigan, also South Florida, soon to be Chicago. You can find me on Instagram or on Facebook. And it's the official Justin Ford. And the reason I had to change it to official Justin Ford, because I thought there was only one of me. But if you put Justin Ford in, there's like hundreds of me. And I'm the <laughs> only official Justin Ford on social media. So all you got to do is look for this cheesy smile. and you'll find me. There's only one smile like that. Yeah, agreed. You're right, because you have real estate agents with that name. I mean, and I didn't think there would be a real estate agent with my name, but there, there's a guy uh, with Colwell Banker, and there is a, a gal with Keller Williams with my first and last name. Wow. How funny. <laughs> so okay, so we'll, happens to the uh, best official of Justin Ford. We will find you. Yeah, Send Justin your referrals. Yes. Is that is that the website, the official Justin Ford? So I don't have a, I mean, Justin Ford, uh, Justin Ford sells.com or Justin Ford team.com. That's my real estate website. Okay, so good. So they can find you that way too, because, you know, I have a feeling you, you're going to get some, and typically you're going to get some, uh, people are going to reach out to you from this. So, so good. Perfect. Wonderful. You know, we really appreciate you being here. This is just exciting. This is something to play over and over and over again. I have a feeling it's going to be one of our 
uh, uh, high volume views for nurture. Yes. So I'm going to keep rewatching those six uh, key steps. Those are a key. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I was, I was, I was rapidly taking notes because you know it's mm -hmm. basically you know when he talks about your goal, having a goal for you know every hour, every day of the week. Basically, I wrote down keeping score. And then he mm -hmm. talked, then he talks about the why, and then he talks about the mindset and the commitment and the discipline and the accountability. Those are great, great, great tools. And, mm -hmm. and uh, we appreciate you going over those. We want to thank everybody for being here. Spread the word. You know, folks, what you may want to do is share this video with somebody not in your market that you like. Because <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you don't want them to watch this and then beat the pants off of you. So yeah. thanks everybody for being here. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Carly. We'll see everybody thanks, next guys. week. Thanks guys. Thanks, thanks. Justin. Bye. 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 Guys.